Today, we have the incredible Andrea Crowder joining us on the show. Andrea, a true believer in the power of audio, is here to share how her business completely transformed by going all in on the medium. From her entire course library to her one-on-one clients and even her lead magnets, everything is in audio form. This strategic pivot not only enabled her to churn out courses at an impressive speed, but it also catapulted her completion rates and repeat buyers. The results? Stellar growth from 400K to $1.8 million in 2023. Beyond the ability to wow her customers with audio content, Andrea is renowned for her deep expertise in nervous system regulation, subconscious reprogramming, and cutting edge business strategy. Trust me, this is an episode you don't want to miss. Welcome to another case study episode. You guys are going to love this one because since this has been on my calendar and Andrea officially booked, I'm like, when's Andrea's day? When's Andrea's day? <laughs> because this, A, your mind is going to be blown as with most people who are in Andrea's world. That's like what she does on the daily. B, I just can't wait to hear just what this is doing for your business and your life, which I know is also a big part of your brand. And so, yeah, I'm just giddy right now. I can feel that excitement running through me. So Andrea, we're so excited that you're here. I just need to know, am I your number one power user? Because like, (laughs) I do like, I'm like a little bit competitive. (laughs) I'm pretty sure if you could log into your account at some point during this interview and tell us how many feeds you have, you may be in competition with a couple other people, but it is part of the show. We're revealing for people who want to share how many actual feeds they have. Oh my God. My COO is literally sitting on the other side of this room. I'm going to message her and be like, how many? We will have Hello. this. Good. That, Adio, that's a great please. teaser. Stay Do tuned for Andrea's total. feed number. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have that number for you in about 12 seconds. Uh, well, th- I mean, honestly, if you had it invited me, I would have just been all up your butt anyway. If somebody said, what pieces of tech could you not live without in your business that you enjoy using the most. And I'm not like a user of tech where I would say I find pleasure in the experience. And that actually has been true for me. You guys are so easy to use for someone who doesn't love to get into the nitty gritty. I was able to get up and running with Hello Audio right away. And I was a little resistant to it at first. Remember you messaged me and you're like, have you considered? And I'm like, interesting, but what about, and like, I just had these you know, some fear-based concerns about, well, isn't that super shareable? And I'm like, well, you know, I guess if we're sharing YouTube links and stuff, like through when people access and in different areas of our business, like what would be the difference? And I was like, if this created a better user experience for the people who are paying for myself, ultimately at the end of the day, if we have like a thousand new customers a month, are we going to get some shares no matter what? Are people going to be like downloading our stuff and like sharing? It's going to happen. And yet, I still have a seven figure business now, which was not true when we first started talking. I had the 400 K business and now I have Mm. this year we'll do, I think like close to 1.8 million or something like that, which is astronomical from when did we like start using hello audio, maybe a couple of years ago or something. Yeah. I mean, we've been live since 2020. I think I started using it towards the end of 2021. Okay. I swear to you, because I can do things through audio, I create at such a speed like unlike anybody else, people are like, how do you do this so fast? Sometimes I have slides and I'll do some stuff on, I'll do like a webinar every now and then. But for the most part, the majority of it is on audio. And then if I want to support with visuals, I'll go create that after. I'll hire someone to do some slides or some, you know, support worksheets or something like that would be more supportive to somebody who's visual. But we do transcriptions of all of it. And then people get a little bit of both depending on the kind of learner that they are. But the number one piece of feedback that we got since we exclusively switched everything over to Hello Audio is your courses are the first courses that I buy and finish. And then I go back to and I listen again. And for the creator, like that's why I create. Yes, it's nice to have the cool analytics that support that the you know, products are successful and useful to people, but for people to actually consume over and over again and really have deep impact because it's so easy to come back to, you don't lose your spot like you do on YouTube. You don't have to log in and it's just already on the app that most people are clicking on anyway. It literally is the biggest no brainer. It's the smartest thing that I've outside of maybe like DM funnels, like these two things. If you're like, you can only have two things in your business. I would be like, okay, something for DM funnels and then hello audio. 
like I could survive off of that and like social media and still do millions of dollars. I love it. You guys, so this, you just went all these places. I'm like, okay, we have to talk about, I'm like trying to take notes in my head. So how, let's like rewind a little bit and maybe you don't remember exactly. So yeah, you and I were having some conversations in the DMs and what like clicked. Do you remember a moment where you're like, that is why like I need private podcasts in my life? Because you guys, if you go back, if you follow Andrea for a day, A, she's like always selling. <laughs> B, <laughs> she has such a, a course suite that serves her audience on you have different price points. And one of the big questions we get at Hello Audio is, well, how much is an audio really worth? And I'm like, you're my example. I was like, <laughs> and I know she has things that are, I don't know if you have anything under 50. I know you have free audio, not even a question, but you basically yeah. hit every price point and you have high ticket course audio. You're what people would call their flagship programs and which we've been, you know, conditioned is like $2,000 or $3,000 or whatever, but oh gosh, it must have all the things. No. You have audio. So yeah. I, as I'm like getting like excited talking about this, you represent so much of, I think what we envisioned early on, but you mm-hmm. represent the action of it actually happening in, in someone's business. And so, so I'm getting ahead of myself because as you look at all of what you've created, you've done that in about a year and a half, not even kidding you guys, this is not made up. And two, you've been very open and sharing this and like your successes in your numbers. That's like part of your brand for sure. But I'm curious, like, where you had a moment where you're like, I'm going all in on this. It was right after our first one because of the feedback that we got from the new clients. Mm. They were like, this is the first time I've gotten all the way through. This was so easy. I love the podcast format. I can't believe. And now I have my mentors who I pay a tremendous amount of money they're seeing me and they're like, what's that thing you're doing? And they're now down. Now I'm seeing them promote. I'm like, I wonder if some of these names coming through are a result of you. That's funny. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, definitely. What is the first product? What was the first product? Okay. So this is why I decided you guys use you guys because I created a program called 15 minute launch coach. And I wanted them to feel like they had a coach in their ear and where they could just like pick up the phone and call. And I was like, okay, podcasts make sense for this. Let's just play with it. And so we use the description area to be able to link resources. So it's not like we don't provide resources that they may get in traditional course format. It's just that we lead with audio so that they know where to find everything that they've ever bought from us. And so now when people like screenshot, this is so good for social, you guys too, marketing, because when people are like, look at this podcast and they'll screenshot like one other person's podcast, my podcast fill the whole rest of their screen and it's all my face with like different branding. And I'm just like, you're a power user. Love you. Okay. So Lorelai said we have 57 feeds currently. Oh, nice. Yes. You're beating yes. Jordan. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that makes you so happy. Jordan Gill has been surpassed. <laughs> so yeah, we started with that one. We got such good feedback from our customers that we actually took old course content and we converted it to audio, put it into Hello Audio. And then we dropped every other subscription to like core software that we ever had. And it's, it was like the smartest thing that we ever did. And we have offers going from free. We use, we use, we, we use Hello Audio to create client feeds. So for my private clients, they can go listen to their previous sessions with me. So they have their own unique feeds. And then we have offers starting from, I want to say $37 at our lowest going up to, I think, 2,555. And this is my flagship product. It's all unconscious free programming around like money mindset and wealth or not money mindset, but like money belief systems and audio. So perfect for that because I'm really just like causing them to see things. Yeah. We link some videos underneath if they want it. Most people don't use it every once in a while. We have someone who really does. They like thrive off of the, off of the video. So they'll use that. And we've had people come and request little things. And it's so easy to tweak a feed and make it more um, usable for someone else. So even when we have people who come and they have like a slight hearing disability, we have the transcriptions and we're just always looking to like improve their experience. But it all goes back to, do they know where to go find the stuff that they bought from us really fast? And then the consumption rate of it. And then of course the testimonials, they're really satisfied. They come back and they buy you know, at least like five, 10 other products from us. Like we have such a high repeat customer rate and they just know where to find it all. And they're just, 
like then they become so happy. Like the user experience is so good that they love sharing our products with their friends. Their affiliate commission started boosting. And of course, like new sales through affiliate channels increased for us too. March 21 was the very first thing that we ever launched through you guys, which was just like a free guided visualization. Actually, it wasn't a launch coach. Yeah. Well, wait, when did you launch this? Because that also, I was like, you're the only e-com product that had a meditation tied to it. And I was like, that's freaking genius. And again, it remains an example that I use when people are like, you know, physical products. You could totally have some information about where your product came from or the team that made it or whatever in like on the actual physical product. Oh my gosh. And please, if you have a physical product that's going to be like sold in stores, please get a QR code on it Mm. that gives them some sort of like juicy freebie through like a guided visualization or some sort of like piece of, you know, um, educational content or entertainment or something like that, because otherwise, how do you, the store might be able to resell them on things, but you can't. So yeah, Amazon's big on this, right? Like you're not allowed to email your customers and there are people that, and it's, I see the inserts that I get when I buy their stuff and they want me to do Mm -hmm. stuff, but none of it's very interesting. And like someone was sending me something like, a meditation that goes with it or whatever, or where this was sourced and, you know, the story behind the brand, like maybe it's easier. It seems easier than, yeah, I think they usually yeah. do like bonus or, you know, something like that, something off, yeah. but yeah, cool. So yeah, it's one of my favorite things that you said that I don't think Nora and I harp on as much as some of the other things we harp on. When you said, they know where to go to find all my content. We say it, but we don't say it exactly like that. And I was like, oh yeah, I know if we say it, you don't have to log in and you don't know where the password is and you don't remember or you're in Kajabi and you've bought 800 other things from Kajabi. You don't know which email address you use. And it's again, just, you know, friction after friction for the person just to do the thing that they paid you for that, you know, will change their life or make some advancement in their life. And it's like, can we just make it easier? And that vision of having the whole podcast player with all the cover art. That's the cool thing. I think that people don't realize we called it early on when we were talking about, we're like, Oh, it's like another inbox. No one uses a podcast app like an inbox, but it is. And Andrea is competing with other people. Maybe that you used to listen to daily. And then she just yeah. does a takeover as you know, cause her stuff's that good. And I think that visual branding, the feeling. I think you're really big, right? On like how people feel when they engage with you and your stuff and like in invoking that feeling and that feeling that they see probably going into the app and being like, what do I need today? And you're able to create those assets rapidly and get it out fast. So now you're like taking over. I mean, I'm just sitting here being like, like, this is what I wish for people in our, I wish this for our users really like this. I was on with some like clients for just, I have this fun little accountability call called stocking club where we just check in once a month and it's like, what do you do towards your North star? And it's just so fun. And at at the beginning, normally it's just like check-ins, accountability, like celebrations, and it's super fun that way. But at the beginning, I was like, I just feel like I need to do this guided visualization. I didn't even know I was going to do it until it was happening. I'm like, everybody close your eyes. Like my thing is like guided visualizations. And it came out and my COO texted me after or during it. Is that a freebie? And I was like, strip it. We got it up into Hello Audio within probably like 10, 12 minutes. And then let's see, she just texted. This was literally no effort whatsoever. And I think we got like 573 opt-ins for a freebie right after we did that. And it was just nothingness. Like it was the (laughs) easiest thing that I've ever done. And I'm like, I collected all of these emails and let them know you're going to get this freebie. And also you'll be the first to hear about this like top, top secret launch. That's all about pleasure and business. And now we're about to use that to do a new launch in like maybe 70 minutes (laughs) or something like that. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) So fun. I love how calm you are. With yeah. Too. That's not normal for, I think, most mm-hmm. people. And I think it speaks volumes to kind of how you've run your business and how yeah. you've architected it, it intentionally and with purpose yeah. so that it does feel really good. And I'm beyond grateful that audio is a part of that. I think mm-hmm. that's that just is a lot. To, I think to your point, Lindsay, it's, this is exactly what we want for people. And this was our hope when we you know, are building it, continue to add features. It's like you, I think, are representing the epitome of what we hope for people in their businesses, that it feels really good. I'm curious if you have a favorite way that you've used it Mm -hmm. or a favorite 
time that you've used it that you look back on that just kind of stands out? Because you use it for a lot of different things. And I, I'm wondering if you have a favorite or if there's one that sticks in your mind for a reason. I mean, I just love that I can use it for everything. That's my favorite. It's like coconut oil. There's nothing that I can't use it for, whether it's to like to create deeper service for, you know, a high ticket client, whether it's to create something fast, like I just did for my community and serve them in seconds and like just the ease, the simplicity. And for me, I would say, I think going back to what you said previous to that about like how I kind of use things effortlessly, like the program we're launching today is called the pleasure model. And it's all about not taking a penny from pressure only pleasure and building your business in such a way that it feels like easy and sustainable. And so I think about all the ways that I want to serve and where are my most natural gifts. And I don't, I mean, like I showed up in a baseball cap and like a lavender hoodie and I feel dressed up because it's lavender. I'm just like also <laughs> in sweatpants. I just want to chill. I'm like a super cozy Virgo. I want to just like chill in my happy little place. And I was telling, I was telling my team members and then my mentor and speaking coach, Allison Bird. And I'm like, look, I want to have like the big podcast someday. My podcast is my passion project. And and I run my main podcast off of Hello Audio as well. I don't use like the other services. So everything I do that's audio is Hello Audio. And I'm like, I want to have the big podcast someday. I love the idea of having a cool studio where I can invite guests in. And also I love the second that I have an idea popping up to my just like teeny little desk, plugging in my mic looking like a level 12 wreck if I want to, I might just like get out of the shower, still be in my robe, whatever, you know, towel on my head, just turn my mic on and I can deliver content. And my gift is my voice. It's not how I'm seen. I think that there is something, I don't think people see like the branding and marketing opportunity that you have with Hello Audio with the way that you can fill your feed with so much of your unique branding, whether you're Ooh, giving that's the free, t- fill their feed <laughs> with your face. Fill their feed, there you go. <laughs> exactly. So I just love that I get to stay in my zone and use my voice. And that's ultimately where I'm the most gifted. I kind of resist using Instagram a little bit because I'm like, I don't want to play the, I don't want to play build a puzzle today on my Instagram mm. feed. But I know that I can serve my audience in like a high level by my voice and like don't have to worry about how that's going to look aesthetically. I love the aesthetics of it and all of that. But at the end of the day, I want to be able to serve my audience, use my gifts, use it with the path of least resistance and do it fast. And Hello Audio is literally like the number one tool for me to be able to do that. Wow. No I feel like deal. that was a mic drop <laughs> moment. <laughs> I'm remembering the post you did a couple was it like two weeks ago where I was just like, oh my gosh, and it's all audio. Could you share some of the numbers that audio only, I don't know, or I could send people that to that link too, but I want to talk about the percentage of your business that is tied to audio. You could even say, like you just said, your one-on-one clients, like Andrea has Mm -hmm. a few select people that she coaches one-on-one, they still even get audio. So what Mm -hmm. portion of audio is your business? Is it literally everything or is it like 80, 90%? I use Instagram for marketing and I love Instagram. That's like your traffic source. Yeah. That's my traffic source and like my public podcast. Mm -hmm. But in terms of how I deliver content, everything is audio. And then it. It, it all comes through Hello Audio first. And then anything that's supported just gets dropped into the show notes if they need the worksheet or just like some sort of formal instructions or whatever. That's it. But I mean, like Catherine Zinkina, who's on the Manifestation Babe podcast, she's one of my private clients. And when I started delivering, she's like, let me learn. I want to learn this. And I'm like, okay. So I send her this private podcast feed. So now her feed is even like her podcast you. app is filled with me. She listens at this woman. Like I love someone who makes like, she'll probably do 10 million or something like that this year, if not more. And I'm doing like one to two and she's still, she's so humble. She's one of the people that I just like, admire the most. Mm-hmm. And she did a launch on using a private podcast feed as well. I'm sure she used Hello Audio. I'm sure I sent her my. She did. I saw her name. Okay, good. (laughs) I'm like, wait. I'm like, oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I saw her. Right, but yes. And she did. She did a freebie with it to launch earlier this year. And I want to say she had a million dollar month or something like that. And she was. I just put this screenshot from that time onto my 
pleasure model sales page because she's like, thank you so much for showing me how like light and easy things can be. Mm. And part of the reason that was so light and easy for her was because she could just put content on using her voice. She loves riffing on her podcast too. Yeah. It's her favorite medium out of all of them, at least in this season. I think that changes yeah. seasonally for her. I'm sure. But yeah, like it was, it just killed. Everybody loved it. The testimonials were through the roof from her. Just watching it was just it was like watching one of the most magical 4th of July firework shows you've ever seen. Aww. It was so cool. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool when your clients that are, you know, you spend a lot of time with personally, like can mm-hmm. show up in that way. We would love to have yeah. her on if she's open to it. I, <laughs> if she like, wants to talk me. about it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> Pass it on. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I think, you know, I think it's interesting. You represent, we definitely have like certain affiliates that have changed their business as a result of Hello Audio. And they tend to bring in you know, the most users for us, but like, because of your inspiration and how you show up online. But I also love that you have the ease piece as part of your brand. And so you really truly marry the things that we wanted for everyone is we know you, you have good content. We know you care about the results of your people and the outcomes and it doesn't have to be so hard. (laughs) And, you know, it's coming from a course consultant who used to build those backend things and like how complicated it was. It's just, that's where that was born out of. It was born out of my own frustration of having to find logins and whatever. And so I just love that. And I love that you're like a beacon for a lot of people in this space with the ease piece and the the intimacy of audio and and that creation, because that's huge. And I think just even this conversation, I'm just like, oh yeah, this is why we did this. I didn't know how I would feel coming into this, yeah. but it's it's cool having these case study interviews because you're just like, wow, like we created this little software and, and people are out there doing more than we even expected, I guess, is, is really where I'm thinking with it. But yeah. I can't live without you guys, number one. So don't ever think about going anywhere. <laughs> number two, the word intimacy. Mm-hmm. That's another piece that I think is so special because like when you are in someone's ear and like your storytelling. And like I said, I like to kind of come get in my space, but that's because I can also close my eyes and I'm not like projecting my attention onto a video. And and like I really pull all my energy in and all of it just gets funneled through the microphone. And I see my person on the other side and I talk to them and I laugh like they're just laughing at my jokes. I I mean, I'm like, I have a Libra moon, so I'm like all about like imagination and I kind of can go up into the ether and then come back down. But I just love putting on my mic and I'm like, okay, this is what I need them to know. And I just, what do I know for sure? I channeled that through the microphone and the connection that I get from people is like, they know that I'm like their number one fucking fan, like ultimate hype woman matched with like practical things that they can do to drastically improve how they are thinking, feeling, and acting in life and business. Like our connection is unbeatable. I told a a new client the other day, I'm like the unruly community. I swear to you, even if someone tried to come at me, I get one hater a year. (laughs) If like somebody tried to come at me, I'm like, we have such close intimacy that like my community would back me up under any circumstances. I just... I know that for sure. They're just not going to try to fight someone for me. They're going to be like, you must be hurting. Do you need a hug? Like we're lovers, not fighters. (laughs) But I know part of that is because they're not just reading my words on Instagram and going into course format where I'm talking to a lot of people. When they put on the headphones, they really feel like I'm just talking to them. And that does create remarkable intimacy with people. Yeah, I think the research being done on it, I think they are labeling it immersiveness, mm-hmm. where it's like, and it's true, the, these headphones that we wear are literally noise canceling. So you're like, okay, yeah. worlds, I'm in Andrea's space now, like I'm choosing this. <laughs> We've heard people call it their sacred podcast time. We talk about the habits that are around listening to podcasts, you know, you taking over their feed. It's, oh, now Andrea has a place. It's in the car. It's playing with the kids or doing the dishes or walking the dog. There's now time for Andrea's and like her voice. And that is very different than like flipping through TikTok or like even watching your stories. It's, it's cool to learn about someone's life. It feels like I know you, but not in the way of the voice mm-hmm. piece of like teaching. Mm-hmm. And that's different. That's like very voyeuristic. Obviously, it's like we're watching, you know, we're choosing to share that behind the scenes stuff of our life. And it is interesting. And it's one piece. It's one piece. And I think audio is untouchable in when it comes to yeah. 
literally feeling like you're in the room with somebody and that cancellation. I think it's those headphone piece that like really creates the close everything off because I'm choosing this. And with your content and the type of stuff you teach, that's really powerful. Going from like, you can clearly tell this is a one-to-many conversation to a one-to-one through private podcasts. Like it's just unbeatable. You can't, yeah. you cannot get that level of like connection. And one of the things that I know through my rapid resolution therapy training is in order to cause a great effect with someone, you can have a lot of different skill sets and you can teach a lot of different skill sets, but none of them land, none of them integrate unless you have connection first. Connection is the power that, that causes the transformation. And I believe that I have mm-hmm. what, like every single Dropbox folder that has testimonials from all my programs is bursting with testimonials. And I really believe part of that is this one-to-one model where I'm connecting with them and they know that I see them, or at least they feel my presence with them. They feel me speaking directly to them. And therefore like the trust and credibility that's built and then like lands and like transformations from them is just remarkable. I just had this image of like, you're not hiding behind slides. You're not hiding behind a login. You're just mm-hmm. accessible. And that's like really yeah. key. And like, especially to your content is very like, you know, play this when you're feeling like this or like, how, you know, yeah. whatever. And so the idea you're actually like having yeah. them come back and that's yeah. the key to like learning the key to connection, right. As they get to know you. And it's like, you're driving them back. You're driving them to the DMS. You're driving mm-hmm. them back to your content and more. And I think that's, I mean, that's what we all want as creators yeah. for sure. That's why we get into this, right? If you're in the course creation world or if you're in the information sharing world, whether it's like information, entertainment, whatever, you do it because you want to share something that makes you happy with other people or you want to take something that changed your life and change others. So like the question always is like, how can I have the greatest effect? What do I need to do that? And there's the old models were so great because they did give us that one to many model and there's so much opportunity to increase intimacy and improvement and overall like efficacy with the things that we offer people. So like I said, your number one fan, if you ever go away, I will literally find you or I'll go recreate it myself. I think, <laughs> Don't yeah. make me do that. <laughs> no, we will definitely not make you do that. I think the one thing too, that I'm picking up on is a lot of what you do is with helping people have a transformation is repetitive, right? Things don't Mm -hmm. just happen once. And so really being able to transform people's habits or routines or or thought processes is, it does require repetition. I mean, Mm -hmm. I know I've seen courses and God bless those that do this, but it's like mindset week. And you're like, seriously, you think things are going to shift in like a mindset week? Okay, that's that sounds... Like it's going to work, right? But when Mm -hmm. something is on audio, it's easy. It's easy to go back to. So it's easy to kind of establish that repetition. It's easier to establish that, that the habits that ultimately bring about transformation, because I, I think that's the other thing that speaks what, you know, just aligns with what you do and the transformations that you're creating with your clients and with your audience. And Mm -hmm. I think audio makes that just so much easier for them to pick up on because, you know, habits are hard. They can be. Yes. I think we do a pretty good job of making them tremendously easier um, with rapid resolution therapy. But what I, what comes to mind first is way back when I started my very first online business in 2011, one of the, I can't remember exactly which mentor created this. So I don't know if it was repeated by them, but I just heard someone say, repetition is the mother of all skill. And like the Virgo in me is like, got it. You just give me the checklist and I'll do it. It's just the checklist that I was given was not sustainable for me. It was like a constant depletion of energy driven by discipline. And so I love that. I love that we have audio because I was the person that's okay. Sell me the set of CDs. Cause that's what people used back then in 2011 And I would listen to them every single day to and from work. So 45 minutes there, 45 minutes home, 90 minutes every day. I called it Drive Time Academy. And I was like reprogramming my brain and like how to sell. So I didn't have any language on how to say things in like a more compelling way to be able to write sales copy or to be able to speak it on the phone back when like sales calls were like more of the majority. And so I would just listen to that over and over and over until I felt really confident in how I could articulate things and to be able to build value in something. And then I started doing webinars and 
going from now I don't have to, it's just that I don't have to carry around a booklet of CDs anymore. <laughs> I have all of, I have all my CDs that I've ever needed on my phone and it's weightless. It's just like the one thing that I'm carrying with me everywhere, always anyway. But yes, like the repetition piece is so crucial. And for the people who were not like integrating consistent, like I'm the psychopath where I'm like, I will literally, I would listen to one CD 73 times until I got it until I was almost like memorized. And then I would move on to the next thing. And, but for the people who won't do that to have at least the accessibility to make it so light and easy when it does feel good, when you are on the walk, when you're folding laundry, when you're doing the thing and you don't have the CD player that you take along with you, it's like such a no brainer. It really does make integration and, um, improvement of skills to be able to use it towards whatever you want, like easier than it's ever been in the history of humanity. I love that. It's funny. It's funny that you bring up the CDs though, because when I was, when we were like first building this product, I was explaining it to my grandparents, which, you know, I had already left teaching by this point. I was already doing online business consulting or course creation or whatever. And they didn't understand what I was doing. And they're like, oh, you're just being Lindsay. But I, my grandma's like, okay, so you're building software. And she's like, what does it do? Now, this is someone who's never listened to a podcast in her life. And she's like, I don't know how podcasts work. And I'm like, it's okay. You know, we take people's courses and we give them the audio version. And she's like, oh, that's how I became a real estate agent. Like it's, it's yeah. books on tape. And I was just books like, on tape. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And so my grandma got it and then hasn't gotten anything I've done in my business up until this point. She doesn't still has not listened to a podcast. <laughs> doesn't quite get it. But just that idea of that connection of like, we've been here before. And that's actually yeah. kind of where the brand of Hello Audio comes from, too. It's like a return to it. Like, Hello Audio, like, yeah. come back to it because we've gone so far towards video. And I think there are things that that make sense for audio to be first and prioritized. And one of them is our lifestyle and our ability to to, yeah, complete and do the work and make it simple. And you guys, honestly, like we can also go back to what people are paying for video platforms versus sure. audio. Like I run a pretty lean business. Like we, we have amazing profit margins. Like every single, every two weeks, my CFO is like, I've never seen anything like this. Love that. We just, we have so few things that we actually need to be able to run the business. So the majority of my expenses are, are good talent. And I know that's true for most businesses, but like there, there's normally so many things where it's add this to this and like connect here. And like, you just need so many things to be able to get one thing done. And I don't even use like Photoshop and stuff like those subscriptions. I don't even need those anymore. Cause I'm just like, not really making slides that often. Like once in a while I'll use Canva or whatever, but just, I need so few things to be able to run a very, a very, very lean business and I know for entrepreneurs, most of the time it's like feast or famine and there's mm. the margins are just in this con, I call it like the fucked faith cycle where it's only just with this huge investment into like integrating this new thing. And I just, I'm supposed to believe in myself that I'll make it all back. And yes, you always do. And yes, like you always come out on the other side and I'm like, but what if it didn't have to be like that stressful to the nervous system all the right. time? What if we could have greater margins? And I just love, you guys are so financially accessible even for anybody who's not making much money in their business yet, it, it people can make thousands of dollars a month really quickly if they only had Hello Audio. Watch me teach a course on that, guys. <laughs> Wait, that's a great idea. <laughs> Dropping the link. I mean, she could record it after this podcast. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but a good bonus or something. Okay, so okay. this is... I, yes, I love this. I'm curious. We've been kind of going this, going this place with some of our case studies. Is there a way that you kind of have been like toying with like creating audio or using audio in your business? I see you as innovative, unruly, if you will. Mm -hmm. Is there like something that you're like, oh, I kind of was thinking about trying this and you just haven't said it out loud. Or maybe your team is over here saying, don't say anything. <laughs> no, don't do anything crazy. They're not. <laughs> yeah. Well, where do you think audio is going? And what do you think could be you, how it could be used? One of the things that we did earlier this year that I just want to keep improving upon mm. is we created, it's a program called the underdog and it's our most accessible program. It's like the ultimate mm. hype woman in your ear for 37 bucks. And, nice. and it's just like seven different audios where it's like, what's that one thing that you need today? So it is prescriptive. I need to feel like, like I'm the underdog, like getting you out of like a dark space or just 
affirming that like you're the you're like the highest paid person or whatever so it's just like fun and light and it was the most creative thing that I've ever done on hello audio where it was almost like spoken poetry Mm. instead of a course which I've I've never done anything like it and everything was scripted out every single word was carefully chosen like it was It was like the perfect ingredient for a little dessert. And so now we're playing with like bringing in like instruments. Like I am starting to almost treat it like like a musician instead of a course creator and educator. And it's just fun to bring the creativity of like how else can we create an impact on people and like hearing different sounds and music and like the way that's done and also using words it changes how people feel their emotional signature so fast. Some of the audios were five minutes, some of them seven, all the way up to, I think like 17 or 20 or something like that. And people are like, we cannot believe we only paid $37 for this thing. And it was just like a Sunday afternoon. I had the top down on my convertible, looked over at my COO and I was like, would it be fun if, and we created it so fast again, it was just like done so fast. And I mean, it's crazy how many, sales that we did off of a $37 program. That and I'm sure into, like, the big program. I was just going to say the, the like path, like if you ran that, that could be a really interesting marketing. Oh my God. Stat, if you guys have like, like yeah. funnel ideas or whatever, like we want everything. <laughs> We're finally like doing nice. stuff and, like funnels and all the Well, that's, I think you're doing it in the right order. Like you yeah. so deeply know your person now, you know, your product suite, like now is when you like optimize mm-hmm. and scale it to the, you'll, you'll be Catherine's numbers at 10 million easily in the next yeah like easily (laughs) okay cool yeah so I I, as I'm sitting here being like I'm thinking audio drama which is a thing and I think you look at those overproduced or really well-produced podcasts the crime junkie things that people are and those are very there's a lot of time in it uh, time intensive but they do create a lot of emotion and like it's that's the point of it right and I think you know, flip that. And we're talking about ease and whatever. And now you're talking about writing scripts and adding music. Maybe that's not your first private podcast that you would create. However, when we just were talking with Angie Jordan about this on a previous episode about a hypnotherapist using it and literally scripting out episodes, because if that's the work you do when you're, you know, your words are powerful and have certain impacts, so does music. Now you're like, you're ushering in a transformation in a different way. And the, and audio makes a hundred percent, like that just makes sense. And so you're now using the tool and taking it to the next level. And I think that that totally makes sense. And I could see you doing, I mean, whole series, so many different, just pump up hype girl things around different types of, you know, issues that people face obstacles, you know, all that stuff. And that was like one out of all of them, right? Where it's, let's add some extra juice to this Mm -hmm. because it just felt fun and creative. Mm. And for the most part, like we don't, except for we did start to play with like fun music in the intro. And then people would subscribe to our new feeds. And then I would see them pop up and like, this is the most fun I ever had create. Like Kenzie Madsen, if you guys follow her, she like created some private podcast feeds with the intro and like cool me it just creates a fun experience we don't Mm -hmm. overproduce our stuff we do very little editing to them but I think and also to your hypnotherapy comment like RRT is similar in efficacy to hypnotherapy and that's what I'm trained and so Mm -hmm. going back to what Nora was saying earlier about changing habits RRT really does do a great job of clearing old emotions changing habits and so that's our number one our highest earning podcasts are the ones that have include RRT for the purpose of a hypnotherapy type experience for people. And they just crush. So if somebody's listening and they're like, I do have that background, some sort of like therapeutic background, Mm. they crush. Like we have the most testimonials from those programs out of all of them. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Now that I'm sitting here, I'm like, I need to, do you know how many people in my Well, especially as a a new mom who went through like the birthing process and hired all these people in the birthing community. And one of the tools I used was Hypno Babies. And I loved it. It was amazing. And it was literally tracks that were playing. I listened to it for a long time. I think it made my birth what it was. And Mm -hmm. I'm so frustrated with their site. And (laughs) I just want to be like, your whole business is these MP3s. And I'm just like, it's so inaccessible. Do you know what Lindsay's doing with them? I have them in my podcast player like a normal yeah. person, <laughs> but 
I, I, I download movies. my prop. I, I'll buy something from someone else and I'll put it into my own feed in Hello Audio. That's I like the secret use case. Better. You guys just yeah. got the secret use case that we don't talk about a lot publicly, <laughs> but that's, I mean, a hundred percent, especially with Powerhouse, you get all the feeds. Yeah. And I'm just like, there's so many people I want to reach out to and I'd be like, can you please? <laughs> but then I'm like, I'm the CEO. So I feel very like, <laughs> let me know. Well, I'll send them my affiliate link. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, we need to create an army that like, <laughs> yes. but yeah, it's true. <laughs> that is so important. And like, I'm literally going to bed and I need the yeah. one episode that I'm on this week. I don't know what these other women are doing to get it. And I'm just like, they're doing it though, because it it's really powerful and people have amazing experiences. And I'm just like, can we make this easier? So yeah, anyone in meditations, therapy, yes. hypnotherapy, powerful, powerful. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So we are definitely coming up on, we've been hanging out with you for 45 minutes. I knew it was going to be a <laughs> meaty episode. I'm curious if you have any, I mean, especially since you're a coach and like your space, but if you have any like... Uh, words of wisdom or feedback or thoughts or ideas to move someone forward to like, just do the private podcast. What is there something you wish you knew at the beginning of, you know, creating your first one or, or looking into Hello Audio? What, what advice think, would you give? I think I wish I knew that to be able to move content from one platform to the other, I thought the migration was going to be harder and it's not. And for someone who's like, that sounds nice, but to be able to do that, it's supposed to take a lot of work. It wasn't. So you guys did such a good job of making the interface so simple. It's so fast to get a feed up. Like I saved so much time. And then on the other side of it, when you think about what will it cost me in terms of time or money to migrate, I would say, how much is it going to cost me to not? Because mm -hmm. ultimately I'm telling you guys like the, not just the consumption of the stuff that people buy, but the repeat purchase rate from my customers just goes through the roof and I can create more. I have more to sell to them. I can create micro topics, like micro micro topics for people at like lower rates. And then I can create more of a macro topic and it's all just effortless. Like I, I've gotten launches up and sold them in hours, hours from idea to like first sale because of Hello Audio. And because I didn't need it, like to have all of the details and to make it super hard, you know. How does your like as as a person who watches your content and is a follower? How do you make people feel that you can move that quick? Because I can tell you how I feel about it. But like I'm watching you like create, and it's really cool. What do you think your audience is thinking as you just are out there, just giving and in in creating all of this for them? I hope that they're feeling inspired that all of the shit that they thought that they needed is so not necessary in order to have the impact that you want. Um, and like the first, the first solo course that I ever created, I didn't have a sales page. I used a private Facebook group. You guys didn't exist yet. And I didn't do anything. I just made people like DM me $3.99 through PayPal. And I screenshot the terms and conditions on a note on my phone. And I sent it to him in a DM. And I did all of that on purpose. Because I'm like the photo shoots. I use those now and I love it because it feels fun. But it like, doesn't prevent me from moving. It's only because it feels fun and interesting. And I want to run a business that feels fun and interesting and nourishing mm -hmm. to me. But like they've, my community has seen me do it under all conditions and say, I just had this idea. I'm going to sell it to you guys a few hours later. Or, hey, we're like building up to this launch, but even still the buildups in our launch are usually like two weeks <laughs> like at the most, because maybe we want to have some fun with the branding or something. Mm. Yeah. I look at it and I'm like, what I love about it is I can see that you just have so much to give people. So, it, and I think every creator wishes they could create at that like prolific level. And I think sometimes we follow people and we're like, like Alex Hermosi was somebody who just is a really recent big thing that people are talking about right now. And there's a lot that led up to what, what transpired yeah. with that. And I'm not, I actually didn't watch it, whatever. Not here to analyze that. Wait, what happened? Oh, I'll, I'll I, look after. <laughs> yeah. My feed is filled with it. I'm sure okay. Norris is too. Um, I mean, he had like 500,000 registrants for a webinar and he gave away all his courses. So it was kind of like, whoa, like whatever. But what I'm trying to get to is I look at that and I'm like the team, the effort to like be like Gary V is another example. Gary V is like arguably like the one that everyone knows, right? From social media. Mm -hmm. 
And it's like, I know he started somewhere and there's that whole thing, but I look at those folks and it's like, they say a lot of cool stuff. They say a lot of not cool stuff where I'm just like, okay, <laughs> but it's a lot. And I think it, it, I feel the distance between me and those people. And I think what I love about what you've done is you've done it and it, usually it's like, I have all this help or I'm X, Y, Z. And like, people are trying to show the reality of what it is to post this many times a day. But I feel like you don't, it doesn't look like that. It looks Mm -hmm. fun. It looks easy. And it looks audience led. It looks, you know, audience Mm -hmm. first, kind of your customer first. And that's what it looks like to me. And not that Alex isn't that, or these people that create a lot of content aren't that it's just different. It's for me, that feels like for them, it's like content for content sake. I don't think you're doing it like that. And you're doing a lot. Like you're putting a lot out there for your people. Um, You're not trying to show up on every platform. So the people who, you know, are there and following you know that, yeah, like you're, you got their back. There's something also that feels like you are adapting Mm -hmm. at what is happening in the world, what is happening, you know, in your own personal life and your business. And I think that also speaks to a lot of people too. So anyways, that's from someone who's a fan. (laughs) That's very genuine. Yeah. Very genuine. Thank you. I'm like not overdone. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Like the, what you said is like responding and adapting and all of that stuff. That's another piece I love about like the ease and the simplicity of being able to use a platform like this is because somebody can send me a DM and I don't respond to all my DMs anymore, but probably still half of them because that's where I get my inspiration. That's why I do have so many unique ideas because I'm constantly having conversations with people through social media, what's going on with you. People can leave us like voicemails on the, on the public podcast and ask questions there. And I'm just never out of ideas because my community constantly tells me what it is that they need. And like I said, I can deliver that in either like a micro topic, like a masterclass where I can deliver it through, you know, like a mini course or a bigger course and none of it matters. But like, I'm just constantly inspired by just what people are asking me through a DM or through those voicemails. And currently to this day, I I don't have anybody who's creating content for me on social media. So I do everything and you'll see me go three weeks out without posting in my Instagram feed. And then I'll post five days in a row. And then I'll like, (laughs) I really do believe in my pleasure over pressure model. Like I, I live this at such a high standard because I believe that this is the future of sustainable business. So I'm just here to exist and to prove to people you can still have the big numbers, the massive, massive success, like drop boxes filled with testimonials and like great impact. And you don't have to kill yourself in the process. And that's mm-hmm. why I have, like my private clients, like they come to me and I, you know, some people I promote and I share on social and people know who they are. And some people I never mentioned, but like people up to like eight figure earners, I've had the on the other side of my Zoom or like heavy hitter investors and reality TV stars, Bravo producers, like really cool fucking people. That's and cool. they come to me because they're like, I can't do this like this forever. And if I'm using any sort of like piece of tech or anything in my business, it's because there's ease of use and it's sustainable and it really can create freedom and impact at the same time. Like we do not have to sacrifice or be more disciplined. Like those two words, I think come at such a fucking Mm -hmm. great cost and most people have no idea. So again, biggest fan (laughs) when I have a book someday, that's all about like my pleasure over pressure, like concept, which will probably come next after this course. Oh, that's, Oh, I forgot to remember. I told, this is how we decided to have this conversation in the DM because I told you, I was like, I spoke my first book on accident. Oh, yeah. That's all this book <laughs> I was like, started. great, come on the show. <laughs> we didn't even talk about that. We didn't even talk about it. I'm so glad we brought it in at the very end. But people have been asking me for at least the last seven years, please write a book. And I'm like, no, thank you. Feel no desire around like sitting down to write a book. It just felt like the most depleting thing anybody could ever ask me to do. Would I want to have a book with like my less? Yes. But I'm like, just buy my courses or whatever. But my program that I launched earlier this year called Amore Money Mm -hmm. is more of a feminine approach to like practical money tactics and Mm -hmm. feels more enjoyable. There's, I have ADHD, so I'm like, if there's no pleasure or reward in it immediately, like I won't do it. So it's all about how to get immediate pleasure and reward in your like money habits. And as I spoke it, my CEO messages me and she's Andrea, this reads like a book. And then Catherine Zinkina messaged me and she's Andrea, this has to be a book. So I handed 
my Hello Audio feed to an editor and she's making it a book. <laughs> and I never had, the book is basically done. I like, I didn't have to write it. I just spoke it. it. And well, that'll I'm be like, a whole other episode. I'm wow. I have so many books now, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. I love it. So like, and now I'll have this like really accessible piece of content mm-hmm. that can be shareable, can live for forever. You know, somebody who has like 30 bucks can like really get like the methodology of it and gain some massive momentum in their life and then maybe come into the course or not. But like the impact of the concepts will just have such a great, really accessible reach. And I did not have to sit down and do something and be disciplined about writing my book. Mm. That Mm. does feel hard. And that's why how many other people are not writing the book is because it is hard and it does feel speak it not fun. (laughs) Speak it. Yeah. So good. Let somebody else write it. <laughs> I have an awesome editor if anybody needs one. <laughs> I feel like we're going to have like 87 links below this episode. So I, know, and I love we'll it. follow up with you on that, but definitely people will be able to check out um, all the things we've talked about today uh, for sure. Nora, do you want to ask our special Absolutely. question? We can bring us home. So we have been asking on every case study question, we ask kind of a fun kind of random question, but it is, if there was a private podcast with your life's ramblings, what would it be called? I think it's going to be called pleasure over pressure. Like, Mm, I think that is the thing that I'm the most known for. It's infused into every single teaching that I, that I talk about, but also into every single way that I live. And Mm -hmm. it has created like the ultimate greatest impact in just a better human experience. The human experience can be really fucking hard. Yeah. But yeah, like that would be the one thing. I love it. Yeah. Perfect. I was like, this is going to be tough because you have a lot of good podcast names. And I'm like, you're giving them to your courses and programs, but I like that one for you. Yeah. Naming the podcast is like the funnest part, guys. (laughs) So (laughs) does that ever happen first? I was just going to say, I feel like that typically happens first. It's like, that needs to be something. Not always, but like daddy energy, like created the whole thing. So we'd always be like daddy this up. And it's just like masculine energy in your business. So like daddy energy became a whole course just because, so yeah, like the names will come in. Amore money. Yes. Amore money came in first. And then the whole program was born after that. And that was like our highest number of pre-sales. I didn't even talk about it. I was just like, here it is guys. And all of a sudden we had like over a hundred sales. I'd never had anything like that happen in my business before. It's remarkable. And like- the downloads of people getting it through private podcasts. And then they would talk to each other in Boxer about how they're using oh, it. Smart. And they'd be like, go back to this episode and go back to this episode. And like they coach So you host like it. Boxer communities for your programs. I've never like done that before oh, until but that's I a launched cool idea. More Money. Yeah. Uh-huh. Smartest thing I've done because I'm like, you guys are, I'm just in there every day screenshotting testimonials. <laughs> like, it's but so it's good. voice and it's not Facebook. And I think that's magical. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Of course, no, I don't do anything on Facebook. Do Facebook anywhere. I'm like, no, I know, please. Oh, I can't do it, but I keep going back. That's bad. Okay. (laughs) Awesome. Well, obviously I knew this was going to be a big episode and this was really fun, Andrea. We're so happy that we got to share this time with you and I know people are going to leave inspired. So I promise I won't leave you all hanging. We will follow up with you and get all the links to all the things so everyone can click and go find you because yeah, super fun. Yeah. Come audio for life your fill your feed with andrew your, the new motto it's pretty good yes. awesome well thanks for stopping by my pleasure and there you have it audio heads another episode of laundry private podcast is in the books i hope you're leaving today feeling even more ready to amplify your voice and connect with your audience in meaningful ways The adventure continues in our next episode with even more insights, strategies, and inspiration to help you along your own private podcasting journey. Of course, make sure to check out helloaudio.fm to start your own private podcast. And remember, you've got amazing content that needs to be heard. So let's turn the volume up. Until next time.